G'day, welcome to Mark and Sam After Work. Today I want to do a video discussing a question which was how do you set your parallax um, in a heavy mirage situation? Um, and I suppose this, listen, it, 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 there's quite a bit to go to actually explain that properly. The simple bit that I'd say to start off with, the parallax is not set by focus. That can be a convenient setup of setting up your scope properly that yes, you get to focus and your parallax is correct, but it's not how you check parallax. Parallax and how you always set parallax is by making sure your crosshairs stay on your target when you move your eye around behind the reticle. That's how you set parallax. Focus is actually another thing, which like I said, can be set up. We've done a whole video on that, but that works the, so largely the same in Mirage by making sure that regardless of how clear your image is. Um, but to answer it really, I'll come back and let's go and explain what, let's talk about Mirage. And that conversation moves into Mirage is light distortion through air or through the, the body that you're looking through. Um, so it creates a, it creates from blurry to wavy to boiling to a double image to, that's what it actually is, light distortion through, through the air. Now, what causes that a lot of people think is just heat um, and, and listen heat can be an instigator without any question but it's actually like going through air bodies with the, the the joint or the the the, the boiling the, the patch the area where two different air bodies two different air densities are working against each other now heat can create that difference in pressure and difference in density um, just different bodies. We, I've seen that over where, where a crop, like a, yeah, a crop with different flowers on it, letting off gas, that can create a difference in air densities or difference in gas densities in that situation, uh, which creates a mirage. If you ever see a barbecue bottle and just releasing or just leaking and actually have a look at it in the right light, you'll see, you can see a very sharp, tight little mirage out of that as well. Um, and you can still see a mirage on snow, you can see a mirage in, in where, there's, where there's no sun or very light sun and still have mirage even though we're not talking about actual so much as heat um, and I suppose I'm saying cold to cold, cold to warm, warm to warm, warm to hot, to, uh, hot to hot, all those different things can create this, it's actually a density thing in the air we're talking about. Um, so that's what it is. Um, and I suppose where you'll tend to find it, or uh, what's the next step we'd go with? Um, the, the reason we shoot with, the way we shoot, where we shoot first thing in the morning is what we tend to shoot, and sometimes last thing in the afternoon. The reason we do that is because largely air, um, the, or the mirage we're talking about, is created by a warmer or different temperature ground air versus the air that's coming in over the top which are different density, I should say. Largely, it's temperature induced, but it's just a difference in those temperatures and it comes in. So that's generally through the day and certainly through the moderate part of the day, both before and after noon. But where it doesn't really exist very much is in the nighttime when there's no sun warming up the ground. And you'll tend to find for the first um, 10 to 15 to 20 minutes to even an hour of the sun coming up where you've got good light but the ground has not warmed up too aggressively to where it hasn't reflected or warmed up the ground air too aggressively and there's not too much of a difference between the flowing air coming in across it. Now there's other reasons for this as other places this happens of different air bodies mixing and all that sort of stuff but that one there is probably the, the main thing that we generally are dealing with. So what we do is we're set up ready to shoot just on dawn, the sun comes up, we get nice bright image and we don't have a mirage for only a fairly short while we don't have mirage. And the same thing happens at the end of the day. There's only short panels in time, probably a little more at the end of the day. And what's actually happened is the ground air has warmed up, the, the, the flowing air is all warmed up. It's all about the same temperature, all about the same density because of that. And that then causes to have low mirage in the end of the day. Sometimes you'll get the middle of the day exactly the same thing. And then this is also changes to cloud cover and to, to what the ground's made out of and what the airflow is like and where it's been. There's all sorts of details that go. It's quite a complex conversation, understanding why those densities change and where they change and all the rest of it. But that's the reason that we shoot. And that's the main way we get around shooting um, Mirage over extreme long shot. Otherwise, a lot of our stuff you wouldn't be able to see. 
But I suppose then we'll get into more of what I'm actually talking about with Mirage and what it's actually doing. When you look at, when you realize that it's bending light that causes those images. Now, I'll go through some of the Mirages and some images here. Whether it's a boiling Mirage or it's a, that low wavy one going through the mid-range where you can see your, where you can read wind. Or it's a, just a blurry image um, which you, is hard to see, the, the, you're hard to see your target with. Or it's an image which is quite sharp but wriggling around all the place. These are all different forms of Mirage and it's to do with the way you're looking through that, air, that, that density difference in the air. Um, it's also to do with where it is in the, whether it's close to you, which can be right down to a, your barrel's hot and you're looking through barrel mirage, um, to you're shooting over a flat piece of ground, you're close to the ground and you've got mirage on the ground in front of you, or you've got a target that, the, the, that is on fairly flat ground and there's mirage in front of it. Largely, your big sharp line wavy mirage will tend to mean that it's down the other end, down towards the target. A really blurry in front of you is tends to mean the mirage is in front. But there's no set rule to this and it's really a bit of learning and understanding that sort of stuff. And there's places where mirages, light mirage, can also help you in the way of reading wind, which will tend to be through the middle of where you're actually shooting. Um, Ways to get around it because of those things is where you position your target. If you're positioning across a long flat section because that's where your target is, you're more likely to have mirage issues when you've only got a gradual increase to it. Because ground air and probably one to two meters off the ground is the most common place to find mirage, in, especially in the, in the middle of the day short of shooting. Um, if you're shooting flat to the ground and you've got a long flat area in front of you and you're only six inches to a metre off the ground or half a metre off the ground, that's very likely that there's a mirage in front of you. It'll probably make a blurry image, but it's very likely to be just in front of you. Simply raising, elevating yourself, getting to a different piece of land that has a bit of a, a drop off in front of it, shooting on the back of your truck, all those sorts of things can actually help if you're, it depends what sort of shooting do, getting up on a tripod and standing position can actually get you out of mirage sometimes. I mentioned barrel mirage. There is, which anyone in the F class world or a lot of the target shooting world sees them all the time. There's simply a, a plate that runs across the front top of the barrel to stop, it's sort of basically an insulator between the air that <laughs> is around the barrel and where your scope vision is. So you have it so that that just keeps that air same temperature as everything else and you don't get that mirage in front of you. So that's just about barrel mirage on a, on a, warm, on a warming up barrel with that air density changing around the barrel because of the radiant heat from the barrel. So that's a little bit of where they come from and, and a little bit of understanding them. I suppose, um, Listen, in the last bits of trying to fix Mirage and do that, like I said, getting up elevation, that type of thing, there's also stuff, um, Mirage and a lot of the blurry images we're talking about are created by that light distortion, or that, sorry, that, um, yeah, light distortion because of the air densities. And when it's very blurry, it's also the amount of different rays, the amount of the, 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 the size of your objective, the larger objective can be picking up more um, light beams coming in which can be giving you more refracted images which gives you blurry images. So that same large objective, not that large but you know whether it's a 56 or it's a 60 or even the 80s, when they start to get really big, although really good for low light transmission with that with the big objective lens on the front of them, it actually starts to work against you in the for mirage situation because more light beams mean potentially more refracted images. So what you can get is either just by using a sunshade, which actually pulls forward and takes some of them out, to where there's actually restrictor rings for the front of them, which actually are just a disc that just comes down to where you get a smaller image. You've got lights, lots of light coming in, so you're not struggling with the image quality because of that. You're actually struggling because there's too many slightly different position ones is what's really going on. So by reducing it down to a smaller hole in the front can actually help with Mirage as well. Um, it is a thing that you can purchase from some companies. I, I haven't used them because we get around our Mirage otherwise, but that's another thing you can do. But I suppose there's, those are ways to help with your blurry image type of thing. There's a bit that is, is fundamental, which is really where I wanted to head this conversation to. And that is that, as said, we're talking about bending of light beams. 
What that ultimately means is that your image is not necessarily where it looks like it is. Um, and it's not necessarily sitting still, the image that is. The target will be, well, in the target we're talking about, which is, is sitting still, it will be, but the image might not be. Um, and that is something that does two things. One, it makes it complex to try and work out exactly where you should be aiming. So especially if you've got a moving image and you can settle down and take an average and that might work. But there's situations where actually if you looked at that image at work, if you had the ability to turn the Mirage on and off, so you took that air out and put stable air in and you pull the other and you switch it just backwards and forwards. If you had that ability, you will quite commonly find when you've got decent mirage is the image won't be where you thought it was. When you turn the mirage off, it'll be here. When you turn it on, it'll be there. Um, and I put together an image here, which shows actually the image moving around and then the image, image stop. Now I've created this. This is out of the logic of it. I can't create it in any other sense. Well, this one actually created by going to a calm spot in the Mirage and then a busy spot in the Mirage and the camera was bolted down. Um, so it hasn't moved, but it's still a created image. It's not something I could actually do. And that moves into the point that is that whether you're setting parallax on getting it exactly right um, or, you're tr or you've got your parallax, you know you're right, you know you're set up on that sort of stuff, you've shot here before, you know where it is, is if you've got Mirage and you've got a one shot job you've got you're trying to do a group i've seen a fair few videos where people are trying to shoot a group um, and they've got a high mirage day and then they come back and start talking about the ammo or this problem or that problem i'm not sure what's wrong the simple thing is is that it's moving it's in different places so you keep on aiming exactly the same place but you're aiming at, a, at an image that's moving all over the place and yet your target is staying still so you're shooting a big group if you have a rifle that's bolted down and you're not changing its position, it's not changing its position and the target is staying still, then yes, it could shoot a group. But if you're aiming between shots or your rifle's moving in any form and you've got to re-aim between shots and you've got high mirage, you're, not, you're almost certainly not going to be shooting directly at the target. You're going to be shooting at where your image was rather than where your target was. So I suppose it comes down to the simple bit of advice goes with it is that if you are in a, a where you have to, this is group shooting, so you're trying to actually test ammo and you're trying to get a group, or this is a one shot job, you have one shot, that's all you've got. Then if you're in moderate to high mirage, that's a no shoot situation. Find a way around the mirage, which is probably a different time of day, but maybe you can correct it in some other form, which is by changing your position and getting around that 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 bending air. Um, if you're just trying to do the best, this is a competition, this is out having fun, that sort of stuff, then you try and work with it. I, I certainly we shoot um, sometimes we're out plinking and we're dealing with decent mirage. It's a it's a challenge. It can be a fruitless, frustrating waste of time if you've got a bad enough mirage and you just can't get it on target because the light is just always going to push you off when you're shooting at small things and you've got too much mirage. But there's it can be a challenge of, of working out how to deal with it. You can be wait and and hold your crosshairs on and see where the target moves and, and figure out that okay, that's about the middle, that's where I'm going to shoot. And that can work. Of course, the middle isn't necessarily the mirror, so it isn't necessarily the middle, so it might not work. But I think, listen, that's an overview, um, largely um, for, for real group shooting in the way of really testing ammo, for really trying to stretch your boundaries, for obviously we, de we deal with extreme stuff, which means that you know one MOA is more than the target. It's a complete miss at a lot of the stuff that we're talking about. So. Mirage is not something we can combat very much at all. We also have the challenge of the fact that we shoot videos. So blurry, horrible image. You can't see anything is not worth showing anyone. But that's how we get around it. And that's some ideas of how to, to answer that question. I hope that was of some value to some people. Um, hope you enjoyed and we'll um, catch you next time.